Libra, welcome to a special series of love readings that I am doing currently. And this is for November and December, and it has to do with troubled relationships called Can This Relationship Be Healed? People who are in a relationship that has experienced some kind of fracture or just estrangement, you're not on the same page anymore, maybe you never were. But it's also for people who have left a relationship or the other person has left and you'd like to get back together with them. But I am mentioning this disclaimer. This is not for people that have an issue in their relationship or had a past issue that relates to physical or severe emotional abuse. Because those types of things, on the surface, you may think, oh, well... He or she only hit me because I made them mad. I triggered them. And you have to understand that if somebody reacts in a violent way because you hit one of their sore spots and they don't seem to be able to control themselves, like it just kind of like, it's like when, when the doctor hits your knee with that thingy that makes, makes your reflexes go. If you mentioning a particular topic causes somebody to go off, that is dangerous. <laughs> That's very dangerous, and I'm, I'm laughing nervously. I'm not laughing because I think it's funny. Um, and even, like, emotionally, if somebody just, like, totally tears you, rips you a new one because you had the audacity and they said you made me angry and they used that as an opportunity to call you every name in the book, that is going to wear you out. Eventually that will do you in. So these kinds of things require a lot more um, assistance than simply acknowledging that there's a problem. And so we're, we're keeping this to even something like infidelity I was mentioning in other videos is one of those sore subjects, but it seems to be a reason that a lot of people split up and yet if you look at infidelity and you get past your own jealousy or bruised ego, you might find, not in every case though, I want to make that clear, but not in every case, but in some cases, it, it's not, I mean, I think in every case it's not about you, you, your essence, but it could be situational. It could be that the person lost their job and they wanted to feel like they, that they are desirable or that they are, maybe they're middle-aged and they, and they feel like they've lost that part of their vitality and they wanted to. Um, explaining it doesn't mean excusing it. It just means that you understand that it's not about you. It's about what's going on within them. In some cases, the person has a sexual addiction or compulsion, whatever you want to call it. And people think that addictions are just like physically based, like that they're going to have some kind of uh, sickness if, if they don't indulge in something. And it doesn't have to be that way at all. There could be physical urge, urges, but still it's more psychological. And I'm not, I'm not saying this as some kind of a trained counselor. I'm just saying that that makes, makes logical sense to me, that... You can have a sexual addiction that is uh, psychologically based, but it can manifest as physical desires too. So understand that you have, it's the story that you tell yourself. If somebody cheats on you and you tell yourself that this means that there's something wrong with you, you're not, I'm, I'm going to say this for Libra, you're not attractive enough, um, you're not young enough then that's what you tell yourself. If you can put it on them and say, well, they obviously have something going on with them, and I don't know if they want to be with me anymore, if they, if they are just in this place where they feel this need to make themselves feel better, and this is the only way they can think to do so, but you don't have to be a victim, and at the same time, you don't have to enable this you can, there can be a middle ground, and that's what the, where the healing comes in. 
I'm not saying in all of these readings that the healing is going to be that you, you live happily ever after with this person. Healing can mean different things. It can mean that you part ways, but that you are okay when you part ways. So that's something I don't think I mentioned in other videos, and I'm glad that I did. And I just wanted to say, too, I didn't mention this in other videos, that I got this idea uh, because when I was a teenager, I used to read Ladies Home Journal. They had an article called, Can This... Uh, relationship be saved and I, I really enjoyed it because it was from the the man's point of view and the woman's point of view um, in those days I don't know if they even still <laughs> have ladies home journal but uh, in those days they didn't have same-sex couples if they still if it still exists now I'm sure that they would have um, um, more diversity in, in their uh, approach but in those days, it was um, very interesting for me to see how the, the one party viewed the relationship and how the other party did. And they were seeing it, they were coming uh, at it from different perspectives. And um, so <clears throat> what I would say is that I was preparing maybe to do the kind of work that I'm doing now all those years ago because that was an interest of mine. So... I just thought that was funny. So what I have here, Libra, is our two decks. They're both tarot decks. On the left is the Morgan Greer deck, which is the deck that I normally use. And on the right is the Crystal Visions deck that I used last month for my love readings. And by the way, my typical love readings, which will cover the month of December, will be up probably in the next week. But I wanted to get this series out because it's fun to do more, um, I, I've been calling it therapeutic readings, where, but it's more self-empowered readings where it's more about looking at you. And I'm actually going to take this uh, Crystal Visions deck and pick one card that's going to represent shadow work for you to do, which is simply work that is that you need to look at um, and whether the card is upright and it's a quote-unquote positive card or not there's always something in these cards that can point to either what you're lacking what you need to bring more into your life or what you need to kind of de-emphasize and maybe get away from so hopefully while I'm shuffling these cards that train will go by because we get a lot of trains around here, and that's one of the things that kind of keeps me from being able to record <laughs> noise-free all the time. That and the leaf blowers, which are the bane of my existence. Okay. Shuffling, and now I'm going to just like spread them out like this. And it's been very interesting how... Um, a lot of these cards have been showing up over and over again. Like themes, you know. Um, I just wanted to say, because when I saw that Five of Wands, I thought of something. You have Mars in your sign in November. And so it's, um, it's a time where you may feel more combative even, um, which I normally don't say for a Libra person. The idea of being combative doesn't really seem apropos, but I've known some Librans in my life that would defy that. So there you go. Okay, and then I'm going to pick that Crystal Visions. I just cut the deck once. Okay, all right. So I got the Emperor and the Empress. Oh, that was interesting. Okay, so the cards in the upper middle are the heart of the matter of what is happening with this other party. The Five of Wands is a card of combative energy, 
a lot of fighting, a lot of bickering, a lot of disharmony. For Libra, this is something that is very upsetting because you like to have, you know, you like to keep the peace. And I was thinking of your opposite sign, Aries, that this totally reminds me of Aries. And um, some of you are with Aries people. But the thing about Aries is they love to spar. They love this. And this card isn't necessarily negative. It could be a friendly competition. But I'm, I'm looking at it since this is about a problematic relationship. I'm seeing that side of it. And it's like the Bickersons or competitive behavior. You have a great job. Your partner has lost his job. I'm going to say his just because I, I think that that would be more the case where this would be a problem is um, the male, the bruised male ego. Uh, usually women, if they lose their jobs, but who knows nowadays with some of these, um, you know, women that are younger than, than me, there may be a lot of that kind of <laughs> macho stuff going on with the women where they feel like they are not contributing or successful and it comes out in sniping and being being resentful and and not getting along with their partner um there's also the 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 card represents the, the wands represent fire signs, okay? So we'll just talk about that. That could be the person that you're with. Aries is the big one that I think of, but there's Leo or Sagittarius. But with Aries, there's the added thing of them being ruled by the god of war. And that's what makes them so competitive and so um, enjoying conflict even sometimes. Maybe even kind of trolling people to get a, a, a reaction out of them. And that may be what they do to you, and you don't like it. But one thing to remember is that if you are excessively like that, where you are always trying to keep people from fighting in your life, that can be irritating and annoying to other people, and that can generate more conflict. Whatever you resist persists. So if that is like too much a part of um, your fears, that will tend to show up even more in my experience in your life, where the people that are the biggest placators find that they attract people who are the biggest instigators. So there has to be that kind of um, balance, which, you know, of course, you're known for balance too. And it's funny, I just noticed this, the Justice card connects to Libra, and so does uh, the Empress. So you're represented in some of these cards. Now, a justice card next to that five of wands, maybe some of you are engaged in a um, a divorce case and you're fighting, you're duking it out. And I don't know why that would show up in this reading unless you don't want to be divorced and the other person is trying to do it. Or if perhaps you, <laughs> I have to say what I was thinking. I was going to say, or perhaps if you have um, a lot of Scorpio in some of those personal planets that you may be vengeful and you may be thinking, okay, well, if this person wants to leave me and if they, uh, if they're in love with somebody else and they want to divorce me to marry somebody else, I'm going to give them the, the battle of their life because they're not going to get out of this unscathed. I'm going to try to take them to the cleaners. I'm going to, you know, whatever. So there could be some of that for some people. Libra in and of itself is not a vengeful sign. But it could be that you feel that you were treated unjustly, and that's where the justice comes in. And you don't think it's fair how you were treated. Um, or that you are, if, if your partner is um, creating disharmony in your home, you think it's unfair. You think that you are being unfairly attacked by this person, that this person is either always blaming you for things or venting on you. When I said severe emotional abuse, I was talking about really um, degrading the other person. But sometimes when people are just in a bad mood all the time or they're always like you, you, 
you ask them something and they bite your head off. Um, that can be very uh, unpleasant too. So all of these things can play into to what happens. And then you have the, the star card, which is a card of faith restored. Um, this is a card of hope. So this is a card that's associated with Aquarius. Perhaps you've met somebody in that of that sign or who has a very strong signature in that. And this is a person that you have fallen in love with. And this is the, the thing that is kind of seeing you through all of this. You're in a, in a very unhappy situation, but you have at least that sense of hope because of that relationship. In the past, we have uh, the Four of Cups, which may indicate that you fell out of love with this person. So the point of this reading is if you want to get back together or restore the relationship, but maybe you're in denial over whether or not the relationship should continue. And that is um, something that you should be honest about because that may have led you to either have an affair or to fall in love with somebody else, but you still may um, be in the marriage for whatever reason. And yet that may not be the best thing for you. Maybe you have children. Um, actually, this is the higher message is like, um, this is the earth mother energy. And this could indicate that some of you are, um, that you, maybe you need to be in that situation. You're sacrificing for your children's well-being. But it could also mean that in a combative situation, if it's really bad, that that isn't the best thing. You may be trying to be noble for your ch children's sake, but actually it's the environment is toxic for them as well as for you. So this happens quite a bit. It's not unusual for parents to worry about splitting up their families, and that's a good thing that people care about their children's welfare. But in certain circumstances, obviously, it is very detrimental to children to be in that environment. And only you can make that ultimate call, but at least that puts it out there. The other thing about the Empress card is about being this, um, I think I got this for, for you for last month, about being this earthy, person because you're an air sign. So you're kind of a little bit more, I was going to say aloof, but a little bit more detached from the body. Okay. And maybe either you've met somebody that makes you feel that sensuality that was missing in your marriage, or that's something to cultivate in a future relationship, or maybe even in your marriage, if your marriage can be saved, who knows? So <laughs> I wanted to put that possible thing in. Uh, before I get to the, the last two cards, I just want to talk about shadow work. The emperor could be either that you are a little bit that you need to take control of your life. You know, Librans tend to be people pleasers and they have a hard time saying no. And the emperor is about this is, I am going to make a decision and I'm going to stick to it. I'm going to say no and mean it, not in a, in a rude way, but I'm not going to feel guilty about my needs getting met and maybe you need more assertiveness maybe you need to have more boundaries in your life or maybe you need to stop being attracted to people like the emperor this is actually associated with aries who have a tendency to be control freaks that could be a another possibility and maybe because you feel you lack that ability to be strong in that way with boundaries, you attract somebody who's very rigid with boundaries. The advice for what's coming in is the Queen of Swords, so this is head over heart. Um, this is actually a very, you know, card that I would associate with Libra, um, of you being able to make clear decisions without allowing your emotions to get the best of you. So whatever it is that you have to decide to do, you're able to do it without agonizing over it 
And um, the outcome is the Ace of Pentacles, which I think I got for another sign, which could be that you attract to you, if you make space for it, that is, a relationship that is much more solid, that has more of a firm foundation that isn't based on kind of um, just, um, it, this could be like you have this physical attraction to the person, but maybe your personalities clash and you can't, you know, you can't stand each other, but you have this amazing chemistry, this amazing sexual chemistry. And this is more of a reliable type of a thing and, and something that you can feel like you can invest in and it can last a long time. So I hope you enjoyed this Libra. And if you'd like a private reading, there's a link below this video to my website. I have a special right now. 20% off all readings with the coupon code Jupiter. So I wish you all the best for the rest of 2017. Bye.